Um, so I have a few times. Yes, I'm an anthropologist from Massey University, and I talk. I come to talk about the PPPA because um, I have an interest in free trade agreements through my research, my research in political anthropology, and uh, my research on indigenous peoples around the world. So my interest in free trade agreements is their impact on poverty, democracy, the environment, and native peoples. In my political anthropology class, I teach that free trade agreements have globalized poverty, undermined democracy, contributed to the environmental crisis that's the greatest that we face today, which is the greatest crisis humankind has ever faced in our history on this planet. And in my endangered cultures class, I teach that they've been an unmitigated disaster for the world's indigenous peoples. The TPPA is a supersized trade agreement. It's been described as NAFTA, or a trade agreement on steroids. But look at the results of other such, the previous trade agreements. When we look at the results of the things like GATT and NAFTA and the MAI, they promised the glories of globalization and prosperity across the land, but the only thing they actually globalized was poverty. They made multinational corporations in the top 1%, actually a much, the top 1 1,000th of 1% 1 of people on this planet, obscenely profitable, but they destroyed the lives of millions of workers. They did not create jobs. Instead, they contributed to mass job losses, waves of forced migration, soaring inequality, and environmental degradation. The overall global result of free trade agreements has been that the rich have gotten richer and grown more powerful, while everyone else has gotten poorer and more powerless. The real promise of the TPPA is that it will lead to even more obscene levels of corporate profits for the 1%, but job losses, lower wages, higher prices, loss of sovereignty, loss of democracy, less internet freedom, and environmental destruction for everyone else and destruction of indigenous peoples, including genocide of indigenous peoples, especially in remote areas of the world like the Amazon Basin. John Key claimed that there are billions of dollars in economic benefits, but John Key is a bankster. He believes in trickle-down economics, these so-called free trade agreements are classic trickle-down economics, which we all know are zombie economics. That is, we know that the system doesn't work that way, we know that trickle-down economics doesn't work, but the idea like a zombie totters on in the ideology of people like John Key and the National Party. Um, I want to mention that, uh, that, again, John Key initially promised there were billions to be made out of this agreement, and have you noticed every time he opens his mouth, he reduces that promise, and his latest statement is, we won't see any benefits actually from this agreement for another 15 to 20 years. And not only that, but you know what? No economist can tell you what the economy is going to do next year, yet alone in 15 to 20 years. Okay, so if you just listen to what he says, you should have no faith in it. And experience has proven that 99% of the benefits of free trade agreements go to the top 1%. The corporations, the banks, and the rich investors reap 99% of the benefits and literally make out like bandits, and everyone else gets what's left. They get the gold, and we get the shaft. In short, they get the gold, we get the shaft. So it's a terrible trade agreement. It isn't mainly about free trade, despite um, what they say about it. And we who are opposed to it are not against free trade. What we're against is a crappy free trade agreement. And that's what's wrong with the TPPA. Um, it's about monopoly and corporate power amounting to a corporate takeover. It does not mostly deal with free trade. It mainly deals with what they call establishing a partnership for corporate protectionism. Does anybody think that corporations need more protection? Nations that join must conform their laws and rules to the agreement strictures, effectively suppl supplanting sovereignty and canceling our right to be a self-determining government. It does this by handing foreign corporations the power to overturn our laws in their prop if their profits are threatened. In this way, the TPP gives away much of our sovereignty to corporate lawyers and creates virtually permanent, permanent corporate rule over all of us. Pardon me. The central danger is what the negotiators call the investor state dispute settlements, and Ian will talk about that in more detail, but let me say a few things about it. The treaty will allow corporations to sue governments for hundreds of millions and even billions of dollars before an arbitration panel composed of three corporate lawyers. 
at which people have no representation and which is not subject to any form of judicial review or any form of appeal. The corporate lawyers who sit on these panels are beholden only to the companies whose cases they adjudicate, who at other times are their employers. So that is, the, a, a, a corporate lawyer can on one case, in one case, uh, uh, represent the country, in another case, represent a corporation, and in another case, be the judge and move between those three roles. And we're supposed to believe that they will just be neutral in all three of those roles, that they aren't mutually contradictory. So an example of what it could look like in practice is in the future, if a more progressive government wants to strengthen our laws to protect our coastlines from oil drilling or our national parks from mining or to raise the minimum wage or to even increase any taxes on corporations and businesses, they could be sued under the ISDS regula uh, regulations for the a anticipated loss of profits. And think about anticipated loss of profits. Talk about pie in the sky. Mm -hmm. There is no science that can tell you what profits are going to be tomorrow. And that's what they do. They come to us and say, well, we anticipate that we're going to make billions next year unless you do that. Well, they're anticipating what corporation ever makes its anticipated targets for profits. It's totally pie in the sky. They just throw out a number. And if they can convince the judge in this tribunal that that number is reasonable, the judge uh, determines in their favor. While the previous trade agreements were under negotiation, they were discussed in the mass media and the texts were made public. This is being done, has been done in secret. It's been done in secret for a very specific reason. Because of the disastrous results of the MIA and NAFTA and GATT, people started to wise up and they started to organize themselves against new free trade agreements and they blocked 14 free trade agreements. Negotiations on 14 different agreements have been blocked by popular protests. As a consequence, when they went to negotiate the TPPA, they decided we'll do this one in secret to prevent that from happening again. So that it's being done in secret is not only anti-democratic, but it's an obvious warning sign. If it was as wonderful as they say it is, they would have been made, made it public, huh? Because they said, we've convinced you. Look, here it is. Read it for yourself. <laughs> right? But they haven't. So obviously, there's a problem right there. Done in secrecy. So uh, we're in the, we are in the midst of an epic battle between the people of the world and transnational corporations. Wealthy governments and corporations are merging in a global system in which private corporations have absolute power over our lives. And this has been described as a grand rush to neo-feudalism. Corporations today, most of the biggest corporations are bigger than most countries. Of the top. 100 largest economic entities in the world, 51 are corporations and 49 are governments. So you realize that we as a small country, when we end up in a battle with a large multinational corporation, it is literally more powerful than our country is. And those who designed our democracy did not build checks and, uh, checks and balances into the systems for that because when they created democracy in the 19th century, these massive, rich, multi-powerful corporations didn't even exist. Everyone presumed that the government will always be more powerful than any company, not any longer. So just let me finish by, I wanted to point out that this that, that neoliberal economics, we've all lived under for the last 30 years, the cornerstone of neoliberal economics are free trade agreements, and this is the exact era of our history where the gap between the rich and the poor has widened greater than at any point since the Middle Ages. To the era of the mat, and we know that we talk about the United States where the middle class has been almost eliminated now. And that's the consequence. We make a lot of money, I have two minutes. We have make a lot of money from free trade agreements, but it goes in at the top and it stays at the top. It doesn't distribute down into the system. That's what we mean about it not being um, trickle-down economics. Trickle-down economics is like believing that if you put your petrol in your radiator, it will trickle down to the petrol tank. The system just doesn't work that way. Then the final thing I, I wanted to say is about the, again, about the ISDS, even though again, Ian is the expert on this, is I have this report that just came out the other day from the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, Journalism Corporate Watch, and it looked at all of the, at the number of trade agreements that have gone to the courts, or the, the court cases as a result of these, since the first ones were passed uh, back in the 1980s. And what they show is that it essentially is, my statistics here, that in the first decade, in the 1990s, there were 42 legal cases taken by corporations against governments. 
Um, then from 2001 to 2010, there were 234 cases. And up to now, five years later, there's been another 244 cases in the first half of this decade, which means by the end of this, in this decade, there'll be a minimum of 500 cases. So the number of cases being brought by these corporations against governments is skyrocketing. It's a geometric curve like this, and what the government says is that they won't use it. I've asked them, and they're asking, I asked the government about the ISDS. They said, don't worry, no corporation would bother to use it. So they have not been paying attention. Um, today, you notice the other day there was a report from Oxfam that says that the wealthiest 62 people on earth now own as much as the, ha the bottom half of the world's population, or 3.6 billion people. That's a direct, that's what is the consequence of neoliberal economics, again, of which the cornerstone is free trade agreements. Thank you very much.